Welcome to the third degree. My name is Sule Prince and I'm here with Dr. Tony Costa. Dr. Costa, we know that Easter is a special um, month in the Christian calendar and it's based on the resurrection, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we know that without the resurrection, there is no Christianity. Is there any good evidence to believe that in the re resurrection of Jesus Christ? Absolutely. There there's 75% of New Testament scholars today do take very seriously the, the gospel accounts about the, the last week of the life of Jesus. And um, the gospels are, they've been called passion accounts with extended introductions mm -hmm. because the, the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, which are the earliest biographies we have on Jesus from the first century, they focus most of their attention on the events leading to his death and then what happens after his death. So there, there's five basic historical points that, that the overwhelming majority of scholars will hold to about Jesus of Nazareth. So let me enumerate them for you. Number one, they believe that Jesus died uh, on a Roman cross mm -hmm. uh, in the first century. And this is what scholars hold to. Yes, yeah. absolutely. There's yeah. no doubt about this. In fact, even atheist scholars uh, grant that Jesus died. The only ones who deny this are those who would deny Jesus his, existed as a historical person. Okay. But even that, we're dealing with a very fringe minority that is not taken seriously by the, uh, the bulk of New Testament scholarship today and historians in other disciplines. So, number one, Jesus died by crucifixion on a Roman cross about the year 33, somewhere between 30 to 33 AD. The second uh, area of agreement is that Jesus received a, a burial. Some would call it an honorable burial, mm -hmm. where um, a, a disciple of Jesus by the name of Joseph of Arimathea uh, took it upon himself to give his master an honorable burial, which would indicate that um, the site of Jesus' tomb was known to both foe and friend alike. Mm -hmm. It was Joseph's own personal family tomb that he placed Jesus' body in. So what this would indicate is that they knew the location of the tomb of Jesus. This mm -hmm. is important, that he wasn't just thrown into a, a common grave with a whole bunch of other criminals. Mm -hmm. So the third one is the discovery of the empty tomb. So according to the Gospels, three days following the death of Jesus, a number of his women disciples came uh, to um, anoint his body, which was a very co common Jewish custom to uh, anoint the body of the dead. And they found, to their amazement, that the tomb, the door to the tomb was opened, and they found that the tomb was empty. Scholars agree that the tomb was empty. They're, the evidence is so overwhelming. There's multiple attestation to back this up within the Gospels themselves, and even outside the Gospels. And the tomb was empty, there is no doubt. So the question is now, what happened to the body of Jesus? Because mm -hmm. dead men don't rise. Yeah. The, 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 the death rate is still one per person. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we know that when someone dies and they're clinically dead, their heart has stopped, their brain waves have stopped, we know that uh, dead matter cannot regenerate itself. Once, you're, once you lose all oxygen mm -hmm. to the brain, to the heart, and so forth, you are pronounced clinically dead. Um, and so the fourth point of agreement that scholars hold to, uh, again, the overwhelming majority, at least 75 plus percent of scholars, is that the disciples of Jesus experienced what they what scholars call post-mortem appearances, meaning that they saw Jesus alive again uh, after his death, mm -hmm. where he appeared to them individually. He appeared to groups of people. At one time, we're told he appeared to 500 uh, believers at one time. He appeared to skeptics like his brother James, who didn't believe in him. He also appeared to foes like Saul of Tarsus, who was a persecutor of the church and then uh, was also known by the name Paul. Um, and so we have to step back and say, okay, maybe it was a hallucination. They mm -hmm. hallucinated seeing Jesus alive. Well, a hallucination does not explain an empty tomb. Yeah. You could hallucinate a dead person being alive again, but their body is still in the tomb. Yeah. But the tomb is empty. They see Jesus, but then you have a problem with the number of people. There are groups of people who saw Jesus alive. Mm -hmm. Now, the question is, if it was a hallucination, I can understand an individual hallucinating, but to have a group of people hallucinating the same thing at the same time, or even 500 people hallucinating the same thing at the same time, is really, is really grasping at straws. Because yeah. hallucinations are subjective uh, phenomena that, that occur in the brain where we project images into reality that are not really there. Mm -hmm. They're not objective. They're subjective based on what we see in our minds, in our brains, and so forth. 
But when groups of people are seeing Jesus alive again, and he's tangible, they could touch him. Mm -hmm. um, they hear him. He, he eats food in front of them. This is what convinced them that not only was the tomb empty, but that he was, he was truly before them. He was tangible. He ate food. This is what really confirmed to them that Jesus was risen from the dead. Mm -hmm. And then number, number five, um, scholars regard these four, these four points leading up to the fifth point that this was the origin of the Christian way. In other words, what got the Christian church, what jump-started the church were these realities. Jesus died, he was buried, his tomb was discovered empty, he appeared alive to his disciples, and this is what got them going. This mm -hmm. is what was the catalyst that got the Christian movement going. Okay. And so when you look at this from an academic point of view, not just a religious point of view, there are academics who look at these, what we call the minimal facts of the life of Jesus. When we look at these things, we have to ask ourselves, well, what leads, uh, what leads a non-Christian scholar to the conclusion that these five points are historically valid? Well, mm -hmm. because the evidence is so overwhelming. Yes. Uh, and not just Christians, but we've had Jewish uh, scholars who have, who have read this. I'm reminded of Pincus Lapid, who was a professor uh, in Germany, a Jewish Orthodox uh, rabbi who wrote the book, The Resurrection of Jesus, A Jewish Perspective. Mm. And he himself admitted that he had, has no doubt that Jesus of Nazareth was raised from the dead. Um, and not just him, we have other folks. Uh, Simon Greenleaf, who was a skeptic, uh, who was also a lawyer, one of the greatest legal minds in the United States, who, who started the Simon Greenleaf uh, School of Law. Uh, his principles of jurisprudence are still used today in the courts of America. And so when, when people have honestly looked at this from, a, from, a, um, from a, a neutral position, but saying, okay, let me look at the facts. Let me see what this leads to. Well, the only, the only uh, result that this leads to is that something happened to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Rival theories have arisen, like they went to the wrong tomb. That has been discarded because they knew where they placed him. Yeah. Others were the conspiracy theory that the disciples stole the body of Jesus in the night and made up the resurrection, but no one dies for a lie, so they wouldn't do that. And at the same time, they're running away. Exactly. Why are they coming to steal a body? Exactly. Yeah. And what's mm -hmm. the point of making up this whole story? Yeah. For what? Uh, to deceive people, but then to die for that lie yeah, exactly. makes no sense at all. And then we have other stories that uh, that really stretch the imagination. We we have folks who, who argue that Jesus really wasn't dead. He mm -hmm. swooned on the cross and and therefore he re, he revived in, in in the tomb but that doesn't explain how he how he moves this massive boulder in front of the tomb yeah. goes by the guards fights through the guards and then and then appears to the disciples with with holes in his wrists and he's lacerated he's naked uh, and then they come to the conclusion that this man is the son of god mm -hmm. and the lord there's no way that they would come to believe that and then you really have some strange theories like jesus had a twin brother and this twin brother came, took Jesus' body out of the tomb, and the disciples mistook him to be Jesus, yeah. and so forth. That's the extent that people will go to, just to avoid the ramifications that Jesus rose from the dead. Yeah, and you know, Dr. Carr, I think it's interesting as well, the, the change in the disciples. Absolutely. Uh, one minute they, they, they're afraid, they're hiding, they're denying, and the next minute they're in front of the same council, who uh, pronounced judgment against Jesus, and now they're proclaiming him later. That's right, and also the Apostle Paul. Let's yeah. not forget, Saul of Tarsus was a persecutor. He killed Christians. He imprisoned Christians. He wanted to stomp out Christianity. Yes. And the fact that a persecutor who hated Jesus Christ, who hated the Christian movement, who killed his followers, all of a sudden he joins them yeah. and becomes one of their ardent followers yes. and writes half of the New Testament. Yeah. Um, you have to ask the question. Something happens. Psychologically... This man had an experience, mm -hmm. and the only experience Paul tells us that made him a believer in Jesus was he said, Jesus appeared to me. Mm -hmm. The risen Christ appeared to me. And, and therefore, we still have to explain the radical change in the Apostle Paul, mm -hmm. how he went from persecutor to believer. Yes, Even and, the disciples at the beginning and, and even didn't the trust disciples. Him. James, the brother yeah. of Jesus, was a skeptic. He didn't yeah. believe in him. No. And, and in fact, had no belief in him as the Messiah, but mm -hmm. yet we're told that that afterwards Jesus appeared to James, we're told that James becomes the leader of the church in Jerusalem, yeah. and he ends up dying as a martyr for his faith in yeah. Jesus as Messiah and Son of God. Mm -hmm. This cannot be said of people mm -hmm. who are in it for the money. These were poor people. They were not making millions mm -hmm. of, of, uh, of uh, shekels in that time. Yeah. And they're uh, on the run. And they're on the run. They're yeah. persecuted. They're hungry. Um, they've, some of their families, they've, they left their families behind and so mm -hmm. forth. 
no one gives up uh, things like that in life unless something transformative must have must have powerfully changed them. Yes. Dr. Costa, thank you so much. My pleasure and happy Easter. You too.